when you're not making the profit you should make on a job to the point where you're scared and miserable doing it, uh, it's incredibly abusive to your own psychology and it trains you to be trapped in scarcity. And I call it, it's basically the doom loop because now out of desperation, you might say yes to another job and then another job and realize over a few years you've built an entire clientele of low profit work. And then when you go to raise the prices, it's scary because you need the money and then the customers actually start firing you. And then you realize that they were never loyal to you at all. They just wanted their property maintenance cheaply. And this isn't true in all cases, but what that does is then that discourages you. And so there can be a point where the dream of having your own business and having your own full-time business and growing an entire, upgrading your lifestyle even because this business now becomes a nightmare. And it feels like it was all a lie. Your hopes and dreams have, are now getting crushed on a daily basis. The money's not coming in like you hoped it would. And then you have to go home and face your family that you feel like they're coming down on you. And now you're a grown man looking in the mirror falling into depression. And then when you're depressed, you get beat up for feeling depressed. And then you beat yourself up for being depressed. And then you beat yourself up for beating yourself up. And that's another doom loop. So... Running your own service business is an amazing opportunity to get multiple college degrees and master's degrees in the hard knock life. And what I encourage you to do is if you can look at it all as a game, as it's, it's separate from the jurisdiction of the peace in your household, your relationship with your creator and with like you have to see it as data, you know, and you can get very emotionally invested, but how can you pull all the strings off? If your chest has like strings and buttons and anything can touch the button and you, re you become emotionally reactive, any outside stimulus of maybe a customer leading you on and then talking you down. I can go through a hundred scenarios of this. I'm looking at the road, by the way. But I, I specifically, clearly, I mean, I still run my landscape business now. We're going into fall cleanups. We're doing ornamental tree trimmings. We're very busy. My media business is busy. And, but I, if I can look back and the times when I needed the money the most, it's when I was under quoting the most, or I thought I quoted a job correctly. And then something pops up that takes literally an extra two days. Now I got guys in the field, labor, I'm working too. And it's just sucking the profit out of the job, which makes me in the, in the truck on the phone calling all the customers, apologizing, feeling horrible and that they're upset because now I have to push the entire schedule back, which takes hours of phone calls, right? Hours of phone calls pushing, pushing a schedule back. And then on top of that, now you're coming in the door stressed out and you're late for family events, you're not present at the dinner table when you're supposed to be present with your family. And the stress keeps compounding and compounding and compounding and compounding and compounding and compounding and compounding, and compounding to the point where eventually you'll snap. And when I mean my snap, usually it's an implosion in the form of some type of depression, right? Um, I want to share something with you that's a personal. I don't want to get too personal here. I'm very fortunate. This is going to sound weird. How do I say this? I don't know where I'd be without my wife. It's not, I'm not saying what you think I'm going to say. How do I say this? My wife is, first of all, the most beautiful, loving, caring, supportive woman I've ever dreamed of and known. But she's also the type of woman that does, <laughs> she does not, this is a good thing. I'm a grown man. I can handle my own shit. But she's not the type of woman that tolerates weakness from me, from her husband. And this type of knowing that I can't come and be a victim and cry to my wife and have her comfort me and tell me everything is going to be okay. She has some deep intrinsic uh probably biological nature which is good going on that's like 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 
I don't want to get too deep into the, the weeds here, but basically it's created a pressure on me that's made me a high performance son of a gun. And I like that because, um, God, I don't want to make this about me, but do you have any, anybody in your life who can spot when you're going off the rails or when you're stuck in your head or where you're being too overly emotional? I'm an emotional person. I'm an empathic person. Um, and I really, really aspire to, uh, like the likes of like a Tommy Mello. We're doing our shop tour series right now. And, uh, Tommy's 300 million a year, 43 locations and 800 employees. In order to be that successful, uh, I believe you have to be able to maintain, uh, alpha states, which is a state of peer awareness and presence where you let the moment ref, uh, inform you of what's required to do. You have clear uh, ability to make um, crystal clear, quick decisions that are final and the ability to be flexible and the ability to, like my friend Kurt Compton, we just left his house to in Arizona. We did a whole tour there. It's coming out soon on my YouTube channel. You get to see this is fire. I've never done anything like this before. The shop tour series. I'm interviewing some heavy hitters and I'm extracting information from their brain and sharing it with you. It'll all be on my channel soon. If you're not subscribed right now, you have to subscribe and turn on notifications because when this series comes out, you're going to love this. It's powerful. But Kurt said, we started talking about Joshua Latimer. Kurt's another founder of a multi-million dollar business called Responsive. Just hear me out. He's like, we're talking about Joshua Latimer. You're going to hear his name a lot. He said, uh, <laughs> Joshua Latimer, who's multi-millionaire he's owned and sold like seven six or seven different businesses he's coached over a thousand business owners he has this ability to discern the difference with other entrepreneurs when he coaches them what is real versus what is imagined right and so do you have an imagined problem in your head or do you have a real problem because to go all the way back to what I was saying, if you're under quoting jobs and you're stuck in the doom loop and you're not crushing it hand over fist and making the money you want to make, and you're attracting the evidence that there's no money out here and employees don't want to work and it's tough, the more that you believe that is the more that it comes out in your behavior and you act it out and then you reinforce the pattern like Dr. Joe Dispenza talks in his book, You Are the Placebo. Uh, You now created a self-fulfilling prophecy. But I always go back to like Eminem said, how am I supposed to rap about shit positive when I don't see shit positive around me? Well, if you can hold a higher vibration in yourself and love yourself, and I, the only way I found to do this is to literally open my Bible and really cut the fat of negativity is not allowed in. And this goes back to your home life. This is deep. Just give me a second. I had to have words with somebody almost a few minutes before this video, very calmly, say, hey, uh, what you said was disrespectful, and we don't do that. I had to say that to somebody, and I said it very calmly, and it wasn't even stressful for me to tell them, because I realized if I just bring it to their attention, hey, um, please don't do that. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't do that. Now they know where the boundary is, and if they do it again, I'll just call them and say, hey, I asked you last time and please don't do that. We don't, we don't do that. That type of behavior causes chaos. We don't do that. Right. And so it's taken me years to get to the point where I can just talk to people like that. If you have employees and you say, Hey, um, on this property, the end goal, we're going to make it look fantastic. The customers are going to be so happy. They're going to give us a positive five-star review. And I've got a $100 bonus for both of you, like a $100 Amazon gift card or something. And if we get out of here by Friday so we can start the next big job Monday, I got 250 bucks each for everybody in the crew. $250 Amazon gift card or something, right? Or here's a gift card for 200 bucks. Take your family out to the whatever, some type of bonus or something, or if they're getting off track and you're like, um, you catch them and you're like, um, Hey, this is my fault. I probably didn't train you properly how to do this thing. 
uh, let's do this together so I can show you the proper way to do it so the end result turns out great. It's just like it's communication. When the customer says, hey, uh, can you come out and do this extra thing for me for free? Hey, Mrs. Jones, I, uh, I love being out here and work. We love serving you and taking care of your property. But um, our contract says we're doing all of this for 3500 bucks, And you don't even have to actually say all that. You can say, okay, do you want to add that on to the job? Okay, so yeah, so extra debris removal goes uh, hundred and twenty dollars per yard. It looks like you've got about three, so I, about three hundred and fifty bucks we can remove all that stuff from behind the garage from you, all those branches and limbs or something. Does that sound right? You want me to go ahead and add this as a change order? It's just communication. It's just business. And so it's like if a customer can feel your level of organization by the very way you market your business, the very way your website looks, the way your positive reviews are, the way you pick up the phone, and they feel a sense of tight organization, they could feel that there's some policy going on, that you take your business serious, and your pricing reflects that, you're actually going to attract a lot more higher paying clients who take you more serious because they want to pay. There's a saying, have you ever, um, if you think... Um, hiring a good contractor is expensive. Try hiring a cheap one because they might do a horrible job and mess something up. And then now they got to pay a good contractor to come in and fix the mess. And now they're going to pay double to fix it. I should have my buddy Steve DeHunt on the, on my channel here. We just did an interview with him and a podcast, put a link in the description below. He talks about all types of stuff like this. And this guy is a $7 million business. And the people that have multi-million dollar businesses or even multiple six-figure businesses, you don't get your business past 100 k without really working your tail off. You don't get your business past 250 k without learning some hard lessons and learning, hey, we can't allow this stuff to happen anymore because we'll never break through 150 k into, like, and you can't get your business past um, 350 k Unless you have some type of, um, what's the word, recurring billing or systematized way of the money coming in, or you're just doing bigger jobs. If you're doing luxury outdoor living spaces and putting in patios, you can blow past that no problem because you have higher ticket uh, jobs. You also have way higher expenses as well. But we do primarily maintenance. But what I'm getting at is the fastest way to increase all this and get out of scarcity and stop undercharging and make more money and literally double your business in the next 12 months is proximity effect. It's to get around really successful entrepreneurs and service business owners who don't respectfully don't take crap from other people. They don't let other people push them around and they're actually servants. They have a servant's heart and they just want to do a good job, but they have, um, they understand the pillars of business that production sales, marketing, and administration, the four pillars of your business, and they have more clarity around it. I'm reading a book right now called The Clipper Ship Strategy. It's phenomenal. It talks about cones and sinkholes and economic booms and busts and when money flows in and when money flows out. So the video I uploaded before this, uh, I'll put it below. If you're frustrated in your business, it might not be you. With the economy, with the election and all that stuff, don't talk about anything political in my comments. This is not a political channel. But what I am saying is it can make people tense and people afraid to spend money. But there is one true thing. Wealthy people are always spending money. And if wealthy people have to stop spending money, they probably will just not go buy the luxury SUV next month. They'll wait a little while or they'll just not go out to the steakhouse four times this month to go out to the steakhouse twice this month. Um, they might hold off on buying the $10,000 couch and they'll still go buy the $10,000 couch because they have the money. They just cut back a bit on luxury spending, but they're definitely not going to get out there and climb their trees cl and trim their trees and start cutting their grass and um, pulling their weeds and putting in their own mulch. They will pay you handsomely and your crew handsomely to show up on time so they can cut a check to solve a problem over and over and over and over and over again and do their snow and put down the salt and you can make gobs of money providing a very clear cut to find professional 
customer service based five star agency I love it so uh, let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts on everything that I said and I also want to know in the comments to do a quick survey do you have a website for your business yet yes or no right and if you uh, do have a website are you happy with your website how important do you think it is do you think it is to have a professional website for your landscaping or lawn care or tree business I want to know and then also hit the subscribe button because my shop tour series is banging we've we've got it all in editing right now we've traveled the country and we're traveling more and this is going to be fire